What's up everyone, China Cycling here. These days, Chinese wheels are becoming all the rage, but no one really knows where they come from or how they're made. So today I'm here with the founder and boss of Four Sports, May. Hi guys. And so today we're gonna show you where Four Sports make the wheels. We're gonna do the whole process from the hubs through to the rims to the wheel assembly. And so I think we have to go to the hub factory first, yeah? Yeah, let's go. Let's go, let's go. At the core of every wheel set is the hub. As well as using hubs from big brands such as DT Swiss, Fastports also have their own hubs with ceramic speed bearings, which they produce at their latest investment, a brand new hub factory on the other side of Shaman. So a 20 kilometer ride later, we arrive at the factory. Okay, so now here we are at the hub factory, and this is where they take this and turn it into this. So how do they do it? Let's find out. So this is the first step of making a hub and it doesn't look much like a hub. So here we have the forged raw billet. So they don't make the billets themselves, they buy these into their specifications. But yeah, this is just a forged lump of uh, alloy that they're gonna use to machine into the hub body. So let's see how to machine it. So the first step is taking the billet and using one of these CNC lathes behind me and lathing down to these specifications. Uh, even at this stage of the process, they're already running at two microns of tolerances, so super accurate stuff. But as you can see, we're starting to look more like a hub and we're starting to look more high tech and shiny. So uh, after the simple lathing's done, it starts to put it on the five axis and uh, let's go see how they do that. So after it's already been on the CNC lathe to come up with this, it's now time to go on one of these five axis CNC machines behind me to finish off the rest of the shell. Now this is going to depend on the complexity of the design, but the more complex, the more time it's going to take. But maybe on one of these machines behind me, it might be on the machine for up to 40 minutes being machined out with all of the various uh, spoke holes uh, and the disc brake mount. So for, yeah, the more lightweight you want your hub to be, the more intricate the design is going to be, but that's more time on the machines. And more time on the machines is what increases the cost of the hub. So whenever you see a hub that's got lots of intricate machining on it, you know it's generally a high-end hub. Uh, and yeah, that's where your cost comes from and that's what you're, what you're paying for. So the next step is the hub shells get sent out to be anodized and then they come back like this, all black and shiny, but then they have to go back on the CNC lathe again uh, for areas like the, uh, the bearing seats they get laid out again, because every time you do anodizing, the tolerances are slightly different. They wanna make sure the tolerance between the bearing and the hub is precise. So when it comes back anodized, once again, these bearing seats get uh, go back on to get even higher precision of the bearing and hub interface. So it's these attention to details that pushes up the production time, pushes up production cost, but make sure that your bearings and your hub are a nice snug fit, so yeah. Okay, so now we've got all our components of our hub, like our hub shell, our axle, and our bearings, and also need to turn them into a hub. So yeah, here we have the ceramic speed bearings, and they have to be pressed onto the hub axle, and then the hub axle has to be pressed into the shell. Obviously with no spokes on here and no spoke tension, the hub shell's extra tight, so you need the press to get it in there. But the diameter between the hub shell and the bearing is super, super, super precise, so they have to press them in gently, and that's what this guy behind me is doing. Now for the cassette bodies, it's a similar sort of process. So multiple machines doing multiple steps of the journey. I've got two here that are in various stages of production. So one that's had its simple machining, and then one that's been machined a bit more with more threads and more weight reduction holes in there. So yeah, attention to detail is pretty crazy. And yeah, something as simple as a free hub body, uh, you can see where the cost comes from. All in all, the hub factor was a cool experience. Uh, watching the hub go from the raw forged billet to a finished hub was a cool process. Uh, talking with the engineers and the machinists about the things they have to watch out for and the amount of testing they have to do before launching a new hub was pretty crazy too. Uh, there was a few things I couldn't show because they do want to keep some secrets, but they do have some very clever ways of making sure that the tolerances stay tight and that your hubs will play nice with your disc rotors, etc, etc. Uh, they also send their high-end hub shells over to Ceramic Speed's laboratory in Europe 
uh, to tweak the dimensions of the bearing seats. So really cool stuff. Anyway, with the hub finished, it's time to ride over to the other side of Shaman to Fastport's rim factory. This is basically where it all started for Fastport's, doing OEM for other brands as early as 2016, and now as well as doing the OEM, making their own rims as well. Okay, so the process starts here in the cold storage room. So we've got these two massive freezers where they keep all of their pre-preg. Uh, so the pre-preg carbon fiber, they're using Torre carbon fiber. Obviously we all know Torre as the top Japanese manufacturer of carbon fiber. And yet in here, it's absolutely freezing cold. I've just been in there, I'm not gonna go in there again. But yeah, they've, they've got their rolls of pre-preg in there ready to go to be cut into slices. Let's go see how they cut it. Okay, so here we are in the cutting room. So here they get all of the sheets of uh, pre-peg that we showed before and basically cut them up into the shapes and also lay them up at the angles they need. So obviously every wheel they have a, basically a list of different slices and different sizes of uh, the pre-peg that need to go in there. And so these guys, they take that list, they know what the guys building the rims need. So they'll build up different layers, like a, a sandwich of the carbon to get the right strength that's needed by the designers. So. They have UD, they have 3K, they've got 12K, they've got all these different things at the disposal. And then they can also uh, have different levels of carbon, so you've got T700, T800, and then also they can change the, the angle of the carbon as well. And then for pieces that need more precise cutting, they've got this machine cutting here, so they can program in the exact length they need, and then this machine will then cut their carbon strands to the exact length that they need. Now one thing you'll notice in every room, every step of the process, they have these huge TVs, and these huge TVs are part of the QC system. And so basically on it, it'll tell them like uh, all of the QC statistics from every step of the process. So how many of the rims fail the QC at this process or that process, and then that allows them to analyze this data and then improve parts of the production process. So if they have a rim, for example, that comes out and a piece of the carbon in the rim is too small when they inspect it, they know the problem's in this room and they can fix that problem for the next batch or whatever. So yeah, all of their statistics, all very data-driven and everything monitored down to the last detail. So now this is like a little warehouse for all the strips of carbon that have been cut next door. And so you've got different, different shapes for different rim widths and stuff. And uh, it says on them like how thick it is, what carbon it is, what the angle of carbon it is. So you can see we've got bits here for like the side of a rim. And then we've got some, some bits for the whole going around the rim here, super long pieces. And so next door, when they're building the rim, they, they see what rim they're building. They come in here, they grab all the pieces they need for the rim. And then they go onto the next stage to put it into a mold. So uh, let's see them put it in the mold. So now this is the room where they're doing the layup. So they take all the pieces of carbon from the warehouse we just saw, and then they're putting it into this mold here. So on every desk, they have a piece of paper that's about the rim they're building. It tells them uh, all the different steps to build the rim, which pieces of which carbon go first, where it's supposed to be, and all that stuff. So uh, these workers here are following those like instructions and then putting the pieces of carbon into this mold. As they put it into the mold, they're using a the hairdryer to get the carbon more pliable and then also uh, using some tools to make sure that all the carbon is compacted properly and then there won't be any air bubbles or anything when they're done. So uh, it's a bit of a laborious process. It takes maybe an hour to do the layup for one wheel. Uh, but you know, you've got to pay, pay attention to every single detail because when you're trying to make the rim as light as you can, you try to use as less material as you can. But obviously the less material you use, the more precisely you have to put it in there. Okay, so now once they've laid it up in their little mold thing, they take it out and they put it on this rack. This rack is like the raw laid up rims. But even at this stage, it's getting QC'd, making sure all of the plies have been put in the right place. And after it's QC'd, it gets put on this rack, ready to go in the mold to be baked. So I see they also wait at this point too. Uh, I talked to them earlier, they say, from the start of production to the rim coming out, it gets weighed four times during the process. So obviously weight is a big thing for a cyclist and our fast sports obviously take it seriously too. So yeah, one rim from the start of production, like the getting the raw materials to leaving this factory gets weighed four times during production. So you can see all the rims now that have been finished, put on this rack, but obviously this is just carbon pre-peg. It's not, you can't ride it, it's still soft, so it has to be baked. So let's go see how they bake it. So this room is more of a physical process. They take the raw rims that we just saw and put them in a mold that can be baked. So the molds themselves, I just asked, they weigh around 100 kilos. So yeah, two guys to put the rim into the mold and then put all the different parts of the mold around it uh, and then push it through this door so it can go next door to be baked. So uh, let's go see them baking some rims. So yeah, this is where they're keeping some of the different molds. I can see it says uh, mountain bike rims, road bike rims. So they've got them sorted by the type of rim it is. 
And like I say, these molds are super heavy, like 100 kilograms, so they have this little forklift truck to help them get them on and off the production line. So uh, yeah, choose a mold and then uh, you can build a rim. So now here we see the hole in the wall that the rims come through. So the rims come through in the mold and get loaded on this conveyor belt. And then on this conveyor belt, they go into these ovens. So in these ovens, two things happen. Number one, the whole mold with the rim inside is heated up to over 100 degrees C. Uh, I can't tell you the exact temperature because it's a secret. And it also gets pressurized. Again, I can't tell you the pressure, but Fosports use a higher than average pressure on their rims. Obviously, higher pressure, in theory, you're gonna get better compaction of the, of the different layers of carbon, less likely to have lamination, etc. Well, it goes in the oven for like more than 40 minutes. Again, I can't say exactly how long. So after the mold comes out of the oven, it goes to another machine next door to be liquid cooled down. That just lets them speed up the production process a bit quicker. It gets liquid cooled for about 10 minutes, and then they're able to pull it out of the liquid cooler, open the mold, and see the rim inside. Okay, so then once the rims come out of the mold, they're weighed and QC'd again. The rims looking super nice. As soon as you wipe off the dust, uh, they're looking nice and clean. Don't need to be sanded down. So these rims are literally straight off the production line. It's still warm in my hand. And like I say, if you wipe off this uh, excess resin, super clean finish. They can do zero coating rims just because the finish is so clean. Doesn't need to be sanded or anything. So yeah, this is literally hot off the press. Okay, so this is another stage of the process for their QC. So at this stage, every single rim gets a tire put on it, a clincher tire, and inflate it to 150 PSI. I just saw them inflate to 150 PSI. Obviously, make sure the rim is fine, but one thing they do, with the tire still on at 150 PSI, they put it on this little jig here, and both sides get measured for uh, the run out or the flatness of the rim. Every single rim gets a tire put on it, inflate to 150 PSI, and check to see if the rim is still flat. If this deformation is over their standards, it gets rejected. Also at this stage, they do a waterproofing test. So they put it under water and pressurize it, see if any bubbles come out, because if it's not waterproof, it means there's a gap in the layup somewhere, and obviously that's gonna weaken the structural integrity. So yeah, this is one step for the QC. And again, up here you see we have a, another, one of their other TVs with all their statistics on it. So every step of, this, every step of the production process, they can see how they're doing for QC. They've got like a 92% pass rate for QC today, but you can also see all the reasons for the QC failures. Uh, for example, it, it was leaking air, uh, or it wasn't flat, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the stage where adding the spoke holes for the rim. So they have this computer controlled machine to drill holes, both for the rim bed and for the inside of the rim for the spokes. Obviously every rim has different requirements for the spoke angles, and so the drill can change its angle to hit those requirements. Then after the holes are made in the rims, they're QC'd yet again. So you can hear, we, see here we have a huge rack of rims, and this is basically like their near final QC. So they get weighed yet again for the fourth time, and uh, yeah, inspected and uh, made sure that they're all up to scratch. So you can see a huge rack of rims here that are ready to be QC'd, and once they've been QC'd, they go into the computer database, and again, you can see all the statistics of all of the rims up here on the screen. The final stage in the rim factory was adding the water transfer decals and any paint jobs, etc. I wasn't allowed to film anything in that room because obviously there were logos of all different brands everywhere. And obviously those big brands wouldn't be very happy knowing that people are paying twice or three times as much for something that comes from the same factory. But one thing I noticed about the factory in general though, they were pretty tight on security. You know, to get into the building, there was a fingerprint reader. And then to get into the production facility itself, there was a facial recognition system. So yeah, very professional and uh, very high tech. Anyway, after the logos are applied, uh, they're QC'd and weighed one final time before being boxed up and sent over to Fastboard's HQ. So now we've got our hub and now we've got our rim, it's time to take them back into Fastboard's HQ to build them into a wheel. So let's head on inside and see how to build these into a wheel. Let's go. Okay, so we just saw at the factory all the rims get QC'd a lot, but here as soon as they get to the HQ they get QC'd again. And again, just double checking everything. So obviously QC is a human thing and humans make mistakes. So just a second layer of QC of the rims before they get built up into wheels. So as well as their own hubs, Four Sports obviously also do wheels with hubs from the likes of DT Swiss, Chris King, White Industries, Extra Light, all those guys. And they're all kept in this warehouse here. So I feel like a bit of a kid in a candy store because there are a whole bunch of really nice high-end uh, hubs in here and absolutely rows upon rows of hubs in here. 
So once we have the hub and once we have the rims, it's time to make them into a wheel. So that's where we come to here, to Fast Sports Wheel Building Center. As you can see on the wall here, we've got a huge, huge amount of rims, all the different rims that they can build up into various different models of wheels. And behind us, we can see the wheel builders busy at work. So uh, let's go take a look how they do it. So the first step of the wheel building is the rough build. So these guys behind me, uh, if the rim has no holes in the spoke bed, they use a magnet to pull through all of the nipples and then basically roughly put the spokes through the hub and attach them to the rim loosely. And uh, once they've done their quick loose rough build, they'll put it on a rack and it's time for the wheel builders to do the proper wheel truing. So after the rough build of the wheels, it's over to the master wheel builders to give them the proper truing. Uh, so these guys have all been building wheels for a long time, but maybe a carbon spoke wheel takes them about 20, 30 minutes to do, and a steel spoke mint wheel maybe or 10 or 20 minutes. So they have these three wheel builders building up the wheels. Once they've built up the wheels, it's over to QC to make sure the wheels are go all good. So after the wheels are fully built, they're brought over here and checked over one more time and weighed and QC'd. Uh, also, this is the packaging and stickers area. So most of the wheels have the water transfer decals, but if some customers have some, uh, some custom stickers or something, that's where these stickers are applied. And uh, once that's all done, the wheels are cleaned down one more time and packaged up and ready to be either put in the warehouse or sent over to the customers. So it looks like these are the wheels that they've done today that are ready to go in the warehouse, but yeah, I've got a whole bunch of their top end wheels and some of the other wheels, handlebars and stuff. So yeah, that all goes into the warehouse and gets ready to be sent to customers. One ongoing part of the production process is the testing. Uh, Fastports have several test facilities to not only test new products, but also batch test their current ones. Uh, one piece of equipment I really liked was this giant like simulator that they've built and it could do several things, but in this setup, it was being used to test rim brakes. So basically there was a 500 watt motor driving the cranks and then the rim brakes on the rear are just constantly squeezed. Uh, they have lasers to measure the deformation of the rim and also the temperature. Uh, the smell of like burning rubber was pretty crazy, something I've never smelt from a bike before, but the rim stood hard and steady. They also had the usual set of machines for testing stiffness and so on, but yeah, good to see them constantly testing and reviewing. After seeing the whole process from start to finish, I thought I'd sit down with the founder and the boss of Fast Sports, May. Uh, I'll leave a link to the full interview in a separate video below, but it's a very cool story. So basically, May's family didn't have a lot of money growing up and she always dreamed she could own a bicycle. So her first job out of university was working as a sales agent for a bike factory. As time went on, she ended up in a carbon frame factory where one of her clients, Roger Devlimic, told her that she should look into making carbon wheels as that's where the future was. Now, if that name doesn't ring a bell, Devlimic was a rider in the 70s and still holds the record for the most individual victories at Paris-Roubaix, winning an incredible four times, racing against Eddie Merckx, no less. May took De Vlimink's advice and started her own rim factory with Roger giving feedback and advice on her products. Uh, she traveled to Belgium to visit him and considers him a huge inspiration in the history of fast sports. He encouraged me to make quality product. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So this is, I keep in my mind. Oh, okay, yeah, so. All the time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I think, yeah. I, I want to let him down. <laughs> We talked about the history of the company and also talked about the future direction of the company. Now, this is usually when many brand bosses will start telling me about their dreams of an IPO and getting on the stock market and all that stuff. But May, she was very different in her answer. I do not have big uh, ambition uh -huh. for fast balls. What I care about is uh, make my, uh, my, my clients be happy, okay. uh, satisfied with our products. This is my care about. I want the <laughs> happy customers, not more customers. Okay. Like I say, the full interview is a little long, so I'll put that in a separate video. But if you want to go check it out, links down below. Okay, so now I hope that has given you a look into how Fast Sports make the wheels. Uh, I hope you learned something, I definitely did. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you next time. China Cycling, out.